Hi there. Thomas Haffey here. Um, I want to take a quick look at something from chapter 11, the product adoption curve, the diffusion curve, lots of different names for it. Um, I know we already have it in the slides. This is taking the same um, image you're used to seeing in the slides for chapter 11. We've already got some good notes in there. I want to touch on it just a little bit deeper. The product adoption curve, it's five levels. Innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggards. Okay? We already have some ideas that, of course, at the first part of the curve, going upward, that's the first people to get into it, right? And then it gets to the masses, and then as it goes down the curve, that's the people that are late to the party, right? Well, I want to take just a quick look at this idea from the Apple iPhone. You can use this with any kind of, especially high-tech gadgets, say even the Xbox One, the PS4, whatever other phone you might care about. But the Apple iPhone is really just inspired a cult following around the world. It's it's a huge marketing bonanza for Apple that they've just really been able to capitalize on. All the fan people of Apple are just huge out there. So we want to take a look at this diffusion curve, just looking at that real quick. So first up, innovators. I like to think of them as the campers. If you see the news stories whenever the new phone comes out, if it would be iPhone 6 in September or whenever it is, whatever they call it, you know, whatever the new phone is, these are the people literally going to a local store and camping out for sometimes days on end in tents, in sleeping bags, you know, huddled up together trying to survive. Why? Because they want the great and glorious honor of being the first people to touch the new toy. They're the campers. These are also of course going to be people say that do um, pre-orders on new technologies or movies coming out but for the most part this is truly those people that want to get their hands on it absolutely the first out, right? And that's the innovators, the bleeding edge. We want it first and foremost, okay? After them, I call them, say, the first friends. These are people that probably went that first day maybe, but they weren't dedicated enough to go camping, per se. They're also going to be people that do um, those pre-orders, have it shipped to their house as soon as possible, things like that. It's going to literally be when you're in your circle of friends, your peers, your family, whatever it is, they're the first people that have the new toys, the shiny new gadgets, the new things that everybody wants to see and ask them, what do you think of it? Is it as good as they say it is? Are you sure it can't do that, that the other phone can do it? Whatever it might be, but they're your first friends. They're going to be a large part of the early adopting people. Anybody that cares, they're going to be caring at the beginning of it. That's how it plays, okay? In the early majority, when it really reaches the tipping point, it's that, if you can remember as, you're, as a kid, or as a teenager, if you've got kids yourself, it's the everybody else has one syndrome. It feels like everyone around you has gotten in front of you. They've got the new toy, the new phone, the new whatever it might be, and you're still stuck with the old one. But mom, everybody else has one. I want one too, right? That's when we really reach that majority level. But actually the whole, as this idea of curve goes, We've reached the tipping point, we've reached that point of, literally, the majority of people have it, and we're going past that now. Going towards the late majority, say it's the new iPhone model, by now, it's probably about a year old. Everybody has one around you that wants one, because of, especially with cell phones, because of contracts, um, all the different companies have come out with their own version of, let's get you into a phone faster by helping you pay for it. Instead of the classic model we're used to with like the iPhone and things that was very subsidized, you pay $200 now, but you're locked in for two years, now it's very much, well, you don't have to pay $200 right now, you can pay us 25 bucks a month for the next two years, but you can quit any time and just pay it off, or you can get a new phone faster, you don't have to wait on those upgrade windows, so that's what some of these, T-Mobile especially led that, but now a lot of the companies, if not all of them, have some kind of model based on that, right? Because everybody else has one. I want it too. I don't want to wait a year or two years between cycles of new phones, right? That's what some people believe. They have to have the latest and greatest. Then the conservatives, the late majority, that's what I like to call the 99 cent shoppers. After, say, the iPhone 5S and 5C came out, then the iPhone 4S is now what? It's the bargain basement option. And when the 6 comes out, the 5 C, I guess, will probably be the bargain basement option. It'll be the, for 99 cents for a dollar with a contract, you can have the fancy phone that just a year or two ago was the latest and greatest thing. Of course, now it's not. It's a self-outmoding system. That's the 
really the genius behind the whole system. Let's come out with a new product every year that makes the last product we had obsolete. Not really, but that's what some people really feel. Car models have done that for years and years and years. We have to come out with a 2013 model, then a 2014 model, then a 2015 model. And unless the car company chooses to make a huge difference, like they actually change the body style, they come out with some brand new models, for the most part they just make little tweaks. They change the angle of the seat, they change what leather color you can get it in, they've upped the gas mileage by one miles per gallon, things like that is the little tweaks they do year to year, but as a product gets older, some people want the newest, especially with phones, right? Finally, we have the people that, I'm not going to pay something like that, I don't need a new one, mine still works. It's paid off, I'm out of contract, I can leave whenever I want, which can be a negotiation tool. If you have a contract paid off, if you are, your phone is paid off and you're sitting there still using it, if suddenly something happens that you don't like AT&T and Verizon comes out with a brand new deal that you like more, you've got the power to switch. There's nothing holding you there. There's no contract, there's no early termination fees, things like that. The skeptics, the laggards, sometimes are playing it from an economic standpoint. They're the people that you think I think they could afford a new car, so why are they still driving a 92 pickup? It's because maybe they're more conservative people economically. Especially older individuals are going to be more conservative, laggard skeptics when we're talking about technology, especially. But also people that maybe just have an economic sense that they have something paid off, they're going to use it until it stops working. They're going to rock it until the wheels fall off, and then, and only then, may they turn into another part of the curve. Not necessarily, they're not going to jump all the way back up to campers, to the innovators. Maybe not even early adopters, but definitely in that early majority. Maybe even they're just going to swap over just a little bit to the late majority. My iPhone 3, you know, just quit working, so let me go get a 4S. It's still worlds better than I'm used to, but it doesn't have to be the absolute greatest and greatest. Something to think about. Look at the product adoption curve just a little bit different, a little bit deeper way. All right. Have fun.